And please do understand the way I'm rating nootropics is based on their ability to make you more productive. We're talking making more money or being a better student. I've been using nootropics for almost about a decade right now and I've spent thousands of dollars on them. If you haven't looked at my recent unboxing video then I would highly recommend that you check that video out here where I spent about $1500 on different nootropics to give me somewhat of a cognitive boost. Overrated nootropic number one, let's see what it is. It's acetyl L-carnitine also known as Alcar. Okay, no guys, I'm just kidding. I don't absolutely hate it. It does do something. And what it's supposed to do is it's supposed to utilize fat for fuel. So our bodies are generally very good for utilizing sugars, also known as glucose for fuel. What acetyl L-carnitine supposedly does is make that whole process more efficient when it comes to burning fat, which should lead to, in theory, being in a better mood, helping you being sharper and further enhancing your concentration, almost similar to ketosis. However, I found that with Alcar, Maybe the only good use of it is when you're taking it fasted, maybe prior to a workout, then you may get like a slight energy boost. But as far as improving your cognition is concerned, I would say it's not worth it. And I've used this nootropic for maybe five or six different vendors over the years. It's not really made any difference using a different brand or using a different dosage. But who this supplement may be good for, it's perhaps somebody elder, maybe if you know somebody that's suffering from Alzheimer's. There's some good signs showing that it can help with memory impairment or neurological conditions. Moving then on to the second nootropic that I consider to be very overrated would be Phenibut. This is a central nervous depressant that a lot of people use for anti-anxiety as well as treating insomnia. If you take a look at this graph here, you can see that Phenibut actually ranks in the top five for helping to treat anxiety, specifically around social anxiety because when it comes to anxiety and general anxiety disorder, I have found that a lot of people use the term anxiety around overthinking and general worry. Maybe it helps a little bit with that. Yet the reason why I say it's somewhat overrated is because of the fact that if you're like me and you're looking to be more productive and make more money, I really can't think of any particular use when it comes to Phenibut at improving your productivity because your discipline is gone, your willpower doesn't even exist, and it's very unlikely that you would like stick to your most productive schedule and do the things that you know are gonna ring the cash register. Quite honestly, Phenibut is like similar to taking a shot of alcohol. Your inhibitions are gone. Maybe your fears and your general concerns wouldn't really be there, so it makes it good perhaps if you're somebody who really knows nootropics and you're an advanced user. Maybe there's something to be said about adding Phenibut to your nootropic stack. But for me anyway, when I use Phenibut, let's say I take it right in the middle of the day, I can definitely feel it working. I'm happier. I'm in a better mood. I'm more likely to go and interact with people, but I know that I'm not focused on the most productive things. And it becomes really likely that I'll break my concentration and fall into the whole swarm of distractions that I have. Whereas something like phenylparacetam, which is a very strong nootropic as well with anti-anxiety, is going to give you the energy while at the same time being very ambitious and really enhancing your concentration. Here's Phenibut HCL powder from Nootropics Depot. This wasn't too effective, so I went ahead and I got it from a lift mode. This is the Phenibut FAA, free amino acid. This is my favorite type of Phenibut I've taken. I've tried three or four different types, and I say that because I found that this particular form is very potent. It seems like one gram of this is equivalent to two or three grams of some of the other styles. Here's what the powder actually looks like. You can see they give it with one of these convenient scoopers because it's something which should be taken in fairly low quantities. The serving size says 500 milligrams. Um, you can even feel it most likely like 300 to 400 milligrams. And some of the larger doses that I definitely wouldn't recommend would be like two or three grams of Phenibut. And then you'll definitely feel it as far as, like I mentioned, feeling somewhat like alcohol. Like you would under no circumstance drive under the influence of a high dose of Phenibut FAA because your hand-eye coordination skills are definitely decreased. So that's something maybe to pay attention to for all of you gamers out there. But with respect to the side effects, there are so many of them. Really be careful when it comes to Phenibut if you are going to give it a try. As a matter of fact, there's a whole a Reddit subreddit dedicated to quitting Phenibut where you'll read about people's experiences where they just generally cannot get off the stuff because they have such bad anxiety and a really bad mood which I've talked about in this video over here and that's one of the reasons why I would call this a very overrated nootropic. And the third overrated nootropic that I would not recommend you spend money on is Jinkle Biloba. Jinkle Biloba, there's a lot of talk around it because let's face it, it's been around for so long. We're talking 20, 30 years. As we take a close look at this graph here which has surveyed a number of people with the overall pleasantness from particular nootropics, we can see that Jinko basically showed almost no improvement when it comes to feeling good or feeling anything from this nootropic. And then if we take a look at the survey that was directed towards the effectiveness of nootropics on improving memory, we can see that Jinko had a little bit of an effect, but in the grand scheme of things, the reason why I think it's overrated is because there's so much talk around this nootropic for improving your memory, yet there are much better things out there. Like looking at this graph here, something which I love for improving your memory is 
Copa Mineri. That was ranked in the top five and in my opinion is safer of the other four. Then as well we have Parastam which is a very strong memory booster as well as Lions. These individuals that have noticed some sort of cognitive improvement with Jinko, they just really haven't been exposed to the other nootropics out there that are very popular now. A lot of people report some of their top nootropic stacks or their top five or 10. So Jinko Biloba is rarely ever mentioned. However, I do want to emphasize that we are all different. Everyone has a different brain chemistry and there are going to be some individuals which really like Jinko Biloba. And it's specifically similar to like I mentioned with Alcar is known to really show effectiveness in elder individuals. Maybe people experiencing some sort of neurological condition like Alzheimer's. Looking at examine.com, we can see there's 11 studies showing its effectiveness with respect to cognitive decline. There's improvements of memory as we scroll down, improvements of cognition. But then the critique comes that if you dive a little bit deeper and you look into the studies, you will very unlikely find any research showing that Jinko Biloba is effective in younger individuals or even healthy individuals. Here we can see here that the age group was over 45 years old. And then looking at the benefits with respect to Jinko Biloba improving your memory, the research was done on people as well over 45 years old. So for younger individuals like myself, I would highly recommend you look into Bacopa Mineri. Heck, there was even a study where they used Bacopa Mineri in med school students, which are intelligent people. They were young, they were healthy, and there was a noticeable improvement in their memory. And I've talked about that in this video over here. But if you were to ask, is Jinko Biloba an effective supplement for improving your cognition? I would say nope and thumbs down, it's highly overrated. There are, however, a few more that I do wanna mention without spending too much time on. The first being N-acetyl-L-tyrosine. And the reason why is because L-tyrosine is far more effective. I think N-acetyl-L-tyrosine is just marketing hype. The second being Vinpocetine, similar to Jinko Biloba, it's been around for a very long time. A lot of people said good things when it comes to improving your memory and improving your general cognition. However, there's far stronger nootropics out there. The third being Adrafinil, which is Modafinil's sister, you can say. Adrafinil is used to improve concentration, focus, mood, and productivity. However, in my opinion, the side effects and the crash that takes place in the later portion of the day makes this be a considerably overrated nootropic. Another overrated nootropic would be Hooperzine A, really because a lot of gurus out there said that it's a good nootropic to learn things in a much faster fashion. It has been my experience. I've used it a number of times over the years and I would say it's highly overrated. And then another would be theocrine. Theocrine is supposedly a stimulant which is not supposed to have the bad crash like caffeine does and is supposedly going to help you when it comes to physical energy, mental energy, thinking more clearly. And it works, but it's really not all that it's hyped up to be because it doesn't have some of the mood improving benefits that you get from caffeine. So I would much rather have like my coffee or my caffeine pills. And now that you've heard about some of the overrated nootropics, if you'd like to hear about the underrated nootropics, then I would highly recommend that you watch this video over here where I rated a number of nootropics from a scale of one to 10. Otherwise, be sure to comment below with your thoughts and I will look forward to seeing you all next time. Take care, guys.